Welcome to Beholder's Eye, a 5th edition actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Thank you for joining us. My name is Alex, and I'll be your host and dungeon master. Joining me, as always, is... Magnar Skullgrim, Goliath Sorcerer. Hobonite, Fire Gensai, Dragon Sorcerer. Margraine Silverbeard, Dwarf Paladin. Who wants to recap last week's episode? Uh, I'll do it. So it started off, the three of us had visions of our individual gods. They gave us kind of direction and some really sweet items. And then we met up the following day trying to figure out what we're going to do. And Magnar is on a path now to find his wife and child. And the other two are following along, I guess, until Margraine figures out what he's supposed to do. And we hitched a ride with Blevin, who we don't really trust necessarily because he's headed towards the mountains. And that's where Vodhava is, supposedly. Assuming Ulfur isn't lying to Magnar. <laughs> All right. So you guys are traveling with Blevin on the road. Um, he's headed straight for Kretvix Pass. Is there anything you passed? Is there anything he, uh, you guys want to speak with him about at this point? Or anything you want to do as the four of you are riding along? Uh, yeah, I, I definitely want to be talking with him as we're riding. Yeah, because I, I really need to feel out this guy and figure out what's up. So so I'll be... Well, so, so Blevin... Uh, we're going to be going through the Pleiades Mountains. Uh, that I, I've never traveled through them before. I, I mostly have lived at the foothills. Is is there anything interesting there? Or yeah, there are quite a few interesting things. Uh, the pass itself, of course, is the site of the great battle between the Empire and Delma. Yes. You know, some of the soldiers say that they see the dead walking through the pass at night, trying to make their way home. Obviously, throughout the mountains. You know, there are stories of great monsters um, all throughout the Pleiades. Obviously, really, Kretvix is the only way anybody can get through the mountains that we know of. Yes. But, uh, you know, people have traveled through there. They say there are great monsters that, that are throughout the land. Um, wow. That's crazy. Like, yes, I, I, I had heard of some things myself, too. Uh, bandits and, 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 and like, the, there are... Even even men looking to to capture and kill mages and everything. It seems crazy. Hmm. Yes, I, I've heard uh, similar things. You know how the common folk are sometimes. They get a little a little crazy. Uh, you know, suddenly a, a group of bandits attack somebody. Somebody gets kidnapped or taken hostage, and suddenly it was mage hunters and things of that nature. I've heard similar tales. Uh, never seen anything like that though. Yeah, I, I've been hearing a lot of tales about mage hunters lately. Uh, uh, you know, you, you know, people people talk about things, but they they mm-hmm. seem to be talking about them a lot more now. Oh, really? Yes. It it, it it's it, it seems rather concerning to me because you know, uh, both of I, uh, both you and I, we seem to be on the same page when we were talking talking at dinner. You know, I, I don't I don't think these men should be hunted or or, or, or or killed. You know, they have a great asset to to Theos. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree. Um... Can I insight check him on that? Just that statement? Uh, yeah. Or, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Please do good. Ten! <laughs> What's wrong? Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, he's telling the truth. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I I just, you know, I thought, I thought Mage Hunters might be a concern for us specifically, because obviously we're traveling with Hibonite here. Mm-hmm. As you, you, you've seen, he's a sorcerer. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have any concern with that. Like I said, I'm pretty sure those are urban legends or pastoral legends really um, and uh, it's not really anything of a concern of mine um, so uh, have any of you been this way before um, we should be coming up on, on the village of Fox Creek here in the next uh, day or so Is it, have any of you visited there previously uh, not there I have been through, through the mountains once though. So. oh you have uh, you were familiar with the Pleiades then have, have you been through Kretvix Pass uh, not familiar I have been near them oh okay interesting uh, did you maybe you can enlighten your friend here have you, have you seen any of the monsters or anything crazy uh, out there at all no, a few monsters were there can me my friend they tend to stay away from the light right right yes I, I can see that all right well are you guys um i mean is there anything else you want to do or say to him mainly just kind of small talk or anything yeah mainly small talk 
Um, I, 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 I want to try and get a measure of the man, you know? Oh. I don't know what to make of him yet. Seems. And I, I kind of want to be looking, like, uh, if he has a book or, or where he keeps his book. Okay, in that, uh, I'm not even going to make you do an insight check or insight, uh, uh, perception check for. He has that um, with him at all times. It's, it's strapped to the back of the horse uh, right now and also has a little bit of a chain attached to his belt uh, so that'll be fun yeah huh okay hey we're gonna be stopping at a town though it's not yeah too that's bad. cool yeah we could figure out something there maybe <laughs> I know. Uh, at least we're close to him <laughs> <Where he's going. laughs> um, we got between now and the kretvix pass to figure it out yeah um, okay okay so yeah, that's all I, I i would want to be asking at least on our on our travel okay so you guys um uh, travel and then around dusk, you see uh, a man. Uh, it's two men with a cart that's broken down. The, the wheel is obviously busted, broken down in the center of the road. How far away are we? Hey, when you first notice them, hey, you're probably about uh, 100 yards. Okay. Okay. We, sh- we should pull back for a minute. It's a heavily wooded area. Why, why, why would he need to pull back, Magna? This is how bandits usually trap travelers. I see. We, we need to be cautious. I, I, are you sure that their car isn't just broken down? You know, they broke a spoke and you might need to help them? It, it's very easy to break a spoke when you're trying to set a trap. I see. I, I just think we should be cautious. So approach slowly? Yes. Okay. And maybe uh, loosen your weapons. Oh, yes, that'll be fine. Yeah, uh, guess approach slowly. And I'll be looking around in the forest as much as possible to see if there's, like, any sort of movement on the sides or uh, like in the trees. Okay. Like give, yeah, give me a, since you're aggressively looking, give me a perception check. All right, please be good. Please be good. Critical. Damn. 22. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Damn. <Yes. laughs> I rolled an Eagle 18, eyes. so oh. yeah, that was, yeah, wow. Um, yeah, so obviously, yeah, <laughs> since I. I rolled something. Yes, you, you <laughs> see, um, there are actually you, you see four people in total, two on each side, and they seem to be basically at this point they're between you and the cart. Um, you know, as far as distance is concerned, they both the both sets seem to be ha- or have their bows out, <clears throat> and you recognize them dressed as very similar to the Soul Green soldiers that you saw at the Fur Trappers Lodge. Okay, and. Were the soul green? Do they have green robes, or are they like green emblems, or is that just a name? No, no, soul green is just the name of the, uh, the country. Okay, um, uh, I mean they're they're wearing really their clothing is more similar to like what Cam and his Rangers were wearing, just trying to blend in with the the environment. Okay, all right, I'm gonna stop my horse and hop off, grab my shield and warhammer, and all right, well, I'll, I'll motion for everybody else to stop too. Oh, uh, wh- oh what's going on, Magna? Look at look in the trees. I, I say that quietly. I I'll I'll look in. Uh, I'll, I'll look around. Do I need to make a perception check or? Um. Yeah, but do it um with advantage since he's helping you. Okay. So I'm guessing I'm there as well. Thirteen. Um. Perception. Perception. Is it? Yeah. Thirteen. I don't have good um, eyes. Eighteen. Now, wait. How does help work? Is that with advantage? It just gives advantage. I think. Okay. Oh yeah, that was your. <laughs> that would no. That was my advantage. Well, okay. <laughs> was the other one eight? <laughs> uh, no, no. I rolled a nine, which made it ten, and I rolled a twelve, which made it thirteen. <laughs> wow. Um. Okay. So canonically, I don't have good eyes. That's true. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So him and I, you see them, and um, so does Blevin, who pulls out his mace. All right, and then I'm gonna walk forward and say, "Shall we get to it?" I'll hop off my horse and follow behind him. And then I'm going to charge the first one on, on my right, I guess, whichever one's closest. Oh, you're so. going to charge them? Okay. Yep. I was going to try to talk to them. This one. Everybody give me a... Uh, Initiative? Yeah, that's the word. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Initiative <laughs> time. Five. Four. <laughs> Twelve. Oh, I was going to try and talk to them. I was going to use my channel divinity. Emissary of peace. <laughs> Plus five to charisma persuasion checks for the next ten minutes. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I should have expected that. You were up front. You're a barbarian. You're going to just charge him. <laughs> I just thought I'd give him a chance to talk. And I'm feeling way overconfident now, so... <laughs> I didn't reset myself up for combat, so we're doing a lot more intrigue. So, 
<laughs> okay, so um, the situation is you guys have the two people in front of you um, who may or may not be tied with the people out to the side. There are four people out to the side. They all have crossbows and um, you know are dressed like the soul green soldiers. The two people in front of you are wearing cloaks. They're in front of a broken down wagon. Um, and then it's the four of you in the middle. Hibba Knight, you are first to go. Okay, I am going to... Are they... Um, are they inside 120 feet? Yes. I'm assuming yes. Uh, I'm a magic missile one dart to each of the guys with crossbows, so one won't get hit. Oh, no, on which side? Your left or right side? Uh, on my right, and... Okay. I'm not gonna swing that. So that'd be one takes four damage, one takes seven damage, and one takes five. Nice. So, uh, you did it among three people or two? Three. So, one, oh. take, one takes four, one takes seven, one takes five. Okay. So three, three darts to go up. Okay. Um, and then, all, actually, that drops all three of them. <laughs> oh, man! <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Wow. Hope that they're right. watching us do this. <laughs> and then Blevin charges up to the guys on horseback and casts a spell. You guys hear a cracking, or not the guys on horseback in front of, uh, in front of the party. You guys hear a cracking thunder, and both guys are knocked back and killed ah. instantly Damn. as he ca- casts Thunder Wave. Okay. Mm. Okay. Would back with the hippo guy have noticed that is a spell? Yes. Yeah. All right, and then one of the soldiers fires at Hibonite, uh Seventeen. Yeah, that hits. Okay. The other one, or and then he, the other one fires uh, thirteen Hibonite. No, that misses. Okay, and that will be their turn. Your uh, turn. How Margaret. much damage did I take? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, six points of piercing damage. Well, I'm happy not to take it. In fairness, I should. <laughs> Um, how many of them are left? There are two left. Two left? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm so oh, no, gonna no, no, do- I'm sorry. Uh, it was just one. Okay, and I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call out to him, and, and I am going to, um, I'm gonna try and persuade him to stand down. I want to know what they're doing. So, like, <laughs> okay, I'm like, you know, you know, this is very difficult check. So, yeah, uh, um, <laughs> that, I mean, that's okay. I, I right. would like to burn my emissary of peace for it. <laughs> okay. Um, cause Explain I need that. To use it. So, so, you know, I, I don't know, I get filled with, filled with, I don't know, holy power or whatever, which makes me particularly, uh, persuasive. Uh, basically for the next 10 minutes, I get a plus five bonus to, uh, persuasion checks. Okay. So, um, so I am going to, you know, um, stand, stand down, uh, this, you know, this, they already dropped your other friends. You don't need to die today. And I will persuade him. Uh, 17 plus 5. Uh, yeah. What? Yeah? Okay. So. Yeah, 22. <laughs> okay. So, uh, initiative's over. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Magnar. You didn't get to oh. kill anything yet. Um, it's because we're so slow. They killed all the guys before I could try and get them to stop. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he comes out. His hand's raised. Yeah. <sighs> I'll walk up behind him, try to like you know, block an exit type thing. Mm-hmm. I I assume you were trying to ambush us, and he's he's a little bit um, just frightened, and he looks over. Well, I, okay, here everybody, give me a perception roll. Okay, perception thirteen, my best roll, uh, a six. <laughs> uh, six. <laughs> okay, which I have answered that as a twenty-one roll. He starts to say something, and then um, he's like, "Well, I'm. I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I guess I'm your prisoner at this point." And he reaches for his hand crossbow that's at his belt. I grab it. Like, does it look like menacingly, or just reaching no, for it? It's kind of shaking a little bit, kind of uh, like his hands visibly shaking. Like he's obviously terrified. And you hear Blevin say something. And then all of a sudden, a mace comes out, made out of some kind of divine energy, and smashes him in the face, caving his face in. All right, um... Oh, I'm sorry about that. It looked like he was about to attack you. Uh, can I insight check that? Yeah, I want to do that, too. That's <laughs> yeah. This man's bunch of crap. bullshitting me. That's a bunch of <laughs> oh, bullshit. Oh, eight! How about that? <laughs> Nine. I'm going to oh. go over and pro- uh, shake his hand and thank him for trying to protect us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, I mean, this guy Blevins uh, on the up and up. I mean, Margarine, the more and more you think, oh, I'm kind of suspicious of this guy, the more and more he just comes up roses. He seems to be a, a good guy, actually. <sighs> You're starting to think, well, maybe what he said about uh, Brommel was probably the truth, and maybe Brommel was trying to set this guy oh, up. 
dice back me up on this. This guy's a liar. Come on. <laughs> they, they have not done so once. <laughs> no, they have not. Um, I'm going to search the bodies. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Um, you search the bodies, and among all of them, you come up with 20 silver. Okay. Each one has a hand crossbow and a long sword. Okay. And once again, since you know to look for it, they all do have the Crucian tattoos on them, like Crucian soldiers. <sighs> all of them are Crucian. All, all of these ones are Crucians as well, Magna. <laughs> oh. That's so strange. They, they must have um, run off from the army or something. Traitors, I'm sure. They turned into a life of banditry. Yes, there seem to be a lot of those around. Uh, can I can I check the cart? Is it the cart actually broken or... Is it? Um, yeah, the, the the cart is fine. Um, you would just need to put the wheel back on. It looks like they just took it off. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Um, didn't Brommel, didn't General Brommel say there was, because there was no evidence, they couldn't follow up on this? Yes. That they were indeed Crucian, but to get proof, perhaps we should go with Hibonite's idea at the cottage and take their arms. With- yes. Wait, take their arms? The whole arm? Or, yeah, we'll well... It takes a couple of seconds. I, the, I, can uh, write, I can write these ones down like the last ones. But he said they were just numbers. That didn't mean anything. But if it's an actual tattoo... Okay. We could, we could cut the section of the tattoo out, maybe? Uh, sure. You guys can do that. Uh, <laughs> okay, i do that. Yeah, yeah go on. <laughs> oh, your, your friend's brother is um, creative. Yes. Yes, they are. Uh, we, 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 you know, hopefully this will help us get to the get to the bottom of this um it's it's a shame that last one though that he he met his untimely death um it looked like he was gonna gonna say something yes it looked like he was about to shoot you oh i i i think i could survive an arrow (laughs) possibly speaking of which and he goes over to hibonite uh one second if you don't mind friend and he says a prayer his hands glow and touches you and you regain six heal uh health points hp any other effects? No. You feel pretty good? I feel like you could take on the world. <laughs> I so <laughs> wanted to talk to that guy. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, do we want to take the wagon? We got horses. We could take the wagon. It's a perfectly yeah. ser- serviceable wagon, right? Yeah, set, up, set the wagon. Okay. Yeah. Let's I'll, take the I'll wagon. Get up to my Clydesdale. So. Cool. Um, it's already yeah. attached to a horse. Oh, there's a horse there. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Extra the- horse as well. Yeah, let's. Yeah, that would be very unconvincing. <laughs> well, I was like picturing that. like I do in like uh, like in the movies and stuff. There's never a horse. It's just two guys with a wagon. You know, it's that's, yeah, um, that's true. But it's <laughs> which would make it even more unconvincing. There's a horse. Yeah. Okay, let's take the horse and wagon. Let's do yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> all right. Who, who's driving the wagon? Um, I, mean, I can try, but well, horses uh, are smart. They can follow. Does uh, somebody have an animal handling check to get the horse to follow? Oh, that's that's what I was hinting at. But I've, I've got a plus two. Uh, you're That'd probably okay. the either you or Magnar. I would say would be the I, best. I don't have anything. So. Okay, so okay, yeah, I'll go give on. it a try. Four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you uh, you go to the horse, and it, it's obviously terrified of you. Maybe it's the flames. You're not sure, but it uh, uh, whinnies and tries to pull away from you um, violently. And then Blevin rides up, and uh, with his twenty-three says. <laughs> it's okay, friend. It's okay. Yes, yes, you're one of Theos' creatures as well. Please, please calm down. Come with us. And he calms down the horse, and uh, he takes takes it by you know, uh, you know, the uh, attaches a rope to it, so it'll calmly follow him. Ah, uh, thank, thank you, Father. Uh, you, of course. You're rather good with animals. Yes, they've always had a soft spot in my heart. Yes, I, 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 I can see that, uh, man. I, w- I wasn't expecting banditry so soon into our trip. Uh, wow. As you said, these are dark times. They are. I'm gonna climb back on my horse. Yeah. Okay. I'll get back on uh, my. Did we did we search the wagon, or was it just the the people? Uh, no, we didn't actually search the wagon. Let's search the wagon. What did we find? <laughs> There's nothing of any value on it. <laughs> just a transport for yeah. banditry. Yeah, yep. we got twenty silver off of the guys, but right. Do we have a party fund yet? Uh, we started one? No, I don't think we have. I can start one if we want one, or I can just give it to you guys. Depends on how much you trust each other. I'm okay somebody having a party fund. I don't really have need for gold. It's just... Well, maybe when we get yeah. a bag that can hold more than just what we can carry on us. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, just a given, huh? You're playing Dungeons & Dragons, so you're going to get a bag of holding? <laughs> um, well, but I can yeah, keep like- a party fund if we want. 
Okay, yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Same. 20 silver pieces. Do you want any nice. of the uh, uh, swords or anything? Weapons, or, so. No, I don't need them. I got I got my longs. I got plenty of weapons, actually. Okay, so. yeah, I'm good. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, so you guys go the rest of the night, make camp along the side of the road. Anything you guys want to do in particular? Um, um, well, I mean, I'm guessing we're going to have to go into watches overnight. So who are uh, those four? I'll take the first and second. I, I can take a watch. I don't mind taking a watch. I can take a watch. <laughs> Why? Do you want to take a watch? <laughs> no, no. Sorry, we talked about before. Well, um, I mean, we can have a we can have multiple watches. You don't, yeah, like we don't necessarily have to have a four hour watch, like because you know it could be two hour so, watches. Just, so. just, 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 just out of every night, you know, of murdering the um, other man. Um, <laughs> it's pretty easy if he's just sleeping, disrupt, disrupt, disarm. But okay. Well, well, the way you do it, Ryan, is you go. I'll take the first watch, and then then you kill him. Okay. Just a little bit of a criminal tip. You you offered to take the watch. I know, but I, don't, I can't take him on my own. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, well, I don't mind taking one if if we need. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get four nights sleep. Okay. Okay. And I will I will take the first watch. Uh, or if Magna wants it, I don't mind. It it doesn't matter. Okay. And I will oil my armor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, not the whole thing. I, I'll wear most of it while I'm taking my watch. <laughs> Just Alex, bit by bit, you know. How many days travel is it to the mountains? To the mountains is a four day travel. Four days. Okay. And this other place you should, should, a longer way? You should be there the next evening. Okay. okay. And and the the whole trip through the pass of the mountains to get through Cretfix Pass? Is that in the four days or No, that's just to get to the pass, the pass. Yeah. and then they let you into the pass and you can travel through yeah yes and that's okay. normally slow going depending on the weather okay. um because it is a pass up in the mountains it's very cold uh, freezing wind freezing rain um and that normally takes about a, you know, a day if we're quick and it, it could be up to two days depending on the weather okay I, I i assumed we were just trying to figure out how much time we have with them before we hit the pass yeah Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought, I yeah. thought you were asking Levin there, so. Oh, yeah. No, I'll, I'll no, ask no. Levin. That, that's perfect. Levin is the guy to ask. Um, okay. I, I was just asking cool. you so I can set my murder clock. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It's a murder o'clock. Uh, <laughs> who would have known? <laughs> yeah. And, Father Levin, and, your time has come. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and if. Levin looks like he's sleeping. I'll just kind of look and see kind of what state he is when he goes, when he sets up for the night, you know? Like, does he, I don't know, does he just kind of lay back and in his traveling clothes and stuff, or does he put things in bags or what? Um, yeah, no, he, he gets very comfortable. Um, he's still wearing his traveling clothes. He's not going to put on jammies or anything. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he, he, you know, he gets comfortable. He gets his sleeping bag out. Lays down. Um, he and does does he keep the, the book on him? Yes, yeah. he keeps the book in the bag with him. Okay. And holds it. Much like a teddy bear. Aww. Okay. That book's going to be hard to get him to part with. Um, okay. There's one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... The, um, give me... Sam, you're going first? Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. Okay. That sounds good. Give me a D100 roll. D100, okay. It's not perception. Uh... <laughs> My great eyes. 81. Okay. You make it through the watch with no, no issues at all. Okay. Magnar, cool. your turn. Um, in, right. Anything you're going to do during your watch? Um, yeah, I really don't like what, where this is going. Um, but I will I will hold off for now, I think. Magnar is unsure of how to proceed. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, all, right. all right. Well, if, do you want to have yep. it? Please. Seven. Okay. Um, give me a perception roll. <laughs> oh, no. 20. Nice. Not natural. Okay. You for sure hear some movement in the area. Um, you're 99% sure that it was just probably a deer or some kind of animal. It uh, didn't sound like people walking around. Okay. Um, I'll stay ready just in case. Okay. You make it through the rest of the 
watch with no issues. All right. I'll wake Hibonite up. Yeah. It's your, it's your watch. Okay. <laughs> we did cover this, right? <laughs> All right. Hibonite, um, you doing anything? No. Okay. <laughs> that sounded really sad. <laughs> no. <laughs> not going to murder him. I really wanted to kill him. <laughs> Okay, so um, are you going to do anything? Or you said you're not going to do anything, so you make it through the, the rest of the watch without any issues. So the next day comes, you guys are rested, everything's back up, and you make your way toward Cretvick's Pass and, and more closely toward Falks Creek. Is it Fox Creek or Falks? Falks, F-A-L-K-S. Okay. Oh, not with an X. Wow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so you make your way as you guys do get to probably about I guess about three in the afternoon um, just a little bit before it's starting to be dusk snow is getting pretty heavy you do get the very distinct smell of burning in the air oh like the town is burning or I mean like we can't see it yet or we can see you it get like lots down. of smoke um, yeah it smells like lots of smoke you know some kind of large wood fire um, yeah, I mean, you can see some smoke off in the distance. Um, you're assuming it's in the direction of the town, but you don't know. Well, I mean, it's definitely in the direction of the town, but you don't know if it's the town itself. Okay. Do we um, hear any, like, screaming or no, nothing, sounds of battle or anything? Nothing at this point. Maybe we should uh, speed our pace. I agree. Yes. Okay. Let's, let's quicken. Okay. Now I'll, I'll speed up into a canter, then. Oh, not a full gallop. You want a full gallop, right? We can do that. Uh, I, I, it's up to you. I don't know what you can. <laughs> I don't know if we can gallop with the horse with no one riding him or the mm-hmm. the cart horse. Yeah, yeah. Let's That's let's gonna... just speed up a bit. Okay. Yeah, speed up. But uh, all four of you speed up um, as you continue to get closer. Uh, it's probably uh, about I would say probably about a, an hour later. Uh, but the the fire's definitely on the road at this point. There's no question about that. Standing in the road, you see four men wearing the armor of the Red Hand soldiers similar to Zorg. Um, with them is a man dressed in full plate mail carrying a very large sword. So there's five total? So there's five total. Correct. Okay. Okay. The four soldiers hold their hands up. They hold their weapons as though in a threatening manner and say, Halt! I get off my horse and pull my shield and war hammer in a threatening manner. What, what, what are you men doing here? Who are you to tell us to halt? We are the soldiers of God. We are we are soldiers of the Red Hand. And I'll I'll jump off my horse in my full plate armor. And as you can see, I am a soldier of God. And the man who's wearing the full plate armor himself steps forward with his giant sword and says, See boys, this is what we're talking about. These corrupt, crooked, so-called men of Theos traveling around with pagans look at uh, i advance on on the guy uh, uh, okay. just for reference how big is he who the the guy the, oh, in the, the plate. plate guy oh yeah he's, i mean he's like normal he's hibonite size like a medium creature. five six foot that sort of thing yeah but six foot he's not okay so double my height okay yeah. got it yeah okay <laughs> so you're advancing um and uh the one wearing the armor says stop halt what, what, once once again, I say, who are you to tell us to halt? And, and Magnar, are you halting or no? Nope. Can, okay, everybody roll me initiative. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did not do that. Okay. Uh, well, you can do your idea, just in initiative. Well, uh, I was going to do, I was gonna do like, suggestion. You have to murder them as well. You guys got to be quicker. <laughs> Remember who you're with. <laughs> All right, don't worry. We're just murder them. Stop. Well, I can still try and talk to them. We slept, so... I could cast a gesture on the leader guy and so like, just try and convince him, but I think I'm just gonna burn him away. I mean <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So you guys rolled really well. Um yeah, it's, it's really, really weird. Hibonite with your twenty one point one four going first. So how far away are they from me? Well, uh you know, before we do that, what was your order? I mean, it sounded like it was um we've got Magnar up front, Margraine right behind him, and then I would, I would have been like in line with my horse. Okay. Um, but I'm still on my horse. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, so you'd be next, and then it would be um, Blevin behind you guys. Okay. So go ahead. I mean, uh, they're within, uh, all of them are within 60 feet. 
So, but it's going to be the, the guy in plate mail is up front. He stood in front of the four red hand guys. And they're all they're all on foot, aren't they? Yep, all foot. And what, what's my what would my speed be on a horse? Uh, sixty. Oh, I think a horse is sixty. Yeah, it sounds good. We'll go with that for right now. So we're not looking it up. But yep. So with that, would I be able to get up? Like, so all three, all all four, is it four of them? Five. five. All five of them would be in a fifteen foot cone from. Yeah, um, more more at the maximum sort of range. You're saying that. if you ride up front in front of your compadres. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Okay. And then I'm gonna use my uh, one once a, a long rest use of burning hands at second level. So firstly, anything uh, they have to do a DC a DC 14 dexterity check. Okay. If they fail that, they take 11 damage or half that on a success. And the flames ignite any flammable objects in the area that aren't being worn or carried. Oh, wow. So so the whole forest. <laughs> <laughs> they all take, what is it, 11 points of damage? Yeah, if they fail the DC check. Damn. Okay. Because um, you see them all just light up. Oh, and for my heart spells, they an action to cast. It's just like casting a normal spell. It's just you get... Extra spells. I mean, let me just check what that spell is. Uh, if I'm to cast, if I cast this step whilst on horseback, mm-hmm. does the horse go no. with me? <laughs> How confused would that horse be? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use my um, heart misty step to teleport myself thirty feet backwards. <laughs> okay, the horse is still very confused. <laughs> so I'm like fifteen feet away from Mac now, and forty five feet away from him. Yeah, like 44. Yeah, about that. So that, that's my turn. Okay. So it is it is your turn next, correct, Margraine? Yep. Okay. Um, and I will, and they're all still up, right? Yep. Um, okay. I will, you said they're about 60 foot away? Yeah, they were 60 from feet away. From him, so I mean, from you, it, we're looking, um, you, I mean, you were ahead of him, so you would have been like, you know, 55, 50 feet away. Okay. I'll take my full movement up there of 25 feet, and I will, actually, as I'm going into this, I'll bless us. That's what I'll do because bless is nice. Um, so Are you gonna try and talk them down as they're on fire. <laughs> uh, so so him and I, Magnar and myself are blessed. Nice. Uh, yeah. Okay. That that will that's, be me. That's D four, right? Whenever yep. a D four on saves, attack um, or saves. Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. So on fire, the man covered in plate mail charges the person closest to him, and if I can, he raises his great sword, and of course that is. You, Margraine, okay. swings twice. Does an 18 hit? Nope. Wow. Okay. So I'm guessing the 12 doesn't either. Nope. All right. So he hits you or hits at you and misses both times. It is now your turn, Magnar. All right. So I'm going to swing at this guy. All right. Uh, man, I'm forgetting how to do this. Um, I'm going into a rage and. That's nice you know that I- you can forget how to be angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do I want to do reckless yet? Uh, no, I'm just going to reckless attack. Or no, I'm sorry, just raging warhammer. Witch bolt. Oh man, ten to hit. <laughs> oh, or you were hit. all right. It doesn't matter. No, no. But who um, with the D4, would I hit possibly? Um. Oh, he's got plate mail. Never mind. Doesn't matter. I'm going after the plate mail guy. That's okay. it. That's all I care about okay. right now. All right. So you miss. You're coming up to him. It is now the other soldiers' turns. They are going to come up and swing with their mace at 21 on Margraine. Yep, oh. that hits. Okay. Wow. So one hit swings. It swings again. 16. Misses, right? Misses, yeah. Okay, so yep. three points of damage. Um, another one comes up and tries to do the same thing. 20. Does that hit you? Yes. Okay, take seven points. 22. Um, take another seven points. Damn. Okay. Um, and then... Magnar, one comes up to you and swings. 19, does that hit you? 19 hits. Okay, take three points of bludgeoning damage. He swings again, right. and um, the power of Ulfur's uh, cape seems to be very strong, and he misses and throws his mace into the woods. Um, <laughs> and then another one's coming up to you again, also to attack 22. I'm assuming that hits. Take six points of bludgeoning damage, and he swings again. 23, um, take three points of damage. All right. You said three both times? Six, three. Six and three. Okay. So, oh, I take three and one, so four more damage. Right, right. so it's a total of, you hit, you've been hit three times, right? So Yeah, I've taken five damage so far. Right. I mean, you know, after my raging. Right. Oh. So, or because of my raging. Right. Okay, cool. And then that is the Red Hand's turn. 
and then um, Levin will once again pull out the uh, mystical, magical, spiritual weapon. Attack with that. Oh, okay. Um, and he will actually, he has this uh, mace that's flying around in the air. It swings at the plate mail guy and misses. Um, so, okay. We're back to the top of the turn order. And that is you, Hibonite. Okay. Uh, how far away are they from me? No, so. um, you were about 15 feet from behind them. So, um, you know, I can't remember. The, the... But uh, are they still clustered like towards Mac now? Yeah, or? they're so got two that are on Magnar, two that are on Margraine, and then both Magnar and Margraine are, are attacking the guy wearing uh, the plate mail in the middle. Okay, so they're like two lines up against each other. Basically, it's more like a cluster. You've got a cluster of, um, what would that be? Uh, six, mm-hmm. seven people right there. Would I be able to get all five of them in the 15 foot cube and none of my no, friends? No, that would be impossible. Can I get some of them? You could get like one on the outside, but it would just be one. Mm. Okay. I can uh, take it. Uh, I've already done stuff to hurt you. Now I'm going to run on a fireball from back in safety. A natural 20. So 26, is it? Uh, yeah. Who are you attacking? The guy on the yeah, plate. Yeah, definitely hits him. Yeah, and that's eight fire damage. Eight. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah, does that get my. No, it doesn't get my Christmas modifier, does it? No. Not yet. Okay. Um, is that the, your turn or are you doing anything else? Um. No, that's my turn. Okay, Margarine. Okay, so I will, uh, I guess the guy right in front of me, big plate mail guy, I'm going to try and hit him with my Warhammer. Uh, nope. Uh, well, yeah, 20. 20. Does hits. 20 hit 20 him? Hits. Okay. Uh, for 11 bludgeoning damage. All right, you smash him hard. He definitely feels it. Nice. Um, and you know what? I will I will throw on some Divine Smite onto that. <laughs> so 2d8. <laughs> Whoa, three. Three. I rolled a one and a two on my Divine Smite. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Okay, you hit him, and um, he's definitely not loving that. So <laughs> he disengages and runs. It's your, Do we get it? Oh, yeah. It's your turn, Magnar. All right. Um then I'm just going to attack the one, whichever one is close to me okay. now. Hey, yeah, you've got two of the Red Hand soldiers right on top of you. All right, yeah, I'll just take one. I'll attack one. Let's see, true strike. Oh, my good lord. Ten. <laughs> what about... No. What about fourteen? Yes. Oh, good. Um, so then I will... So eight damage, but also... Um, I don't know how you want to do this, Alex, but I'm going to sink some Divine Fury into that. Okay. And uh, that's... Does anything like physically happen? Is that cool? Yeah, yeah. So like, all right. So like, purplish light like emanates from Magnar as he strikes into this thing, dealing far more damage than she. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you drop him. Nice. <sighs> Goes down screaming. Okay. Anything else? Nah, I'm done. Okay. Um, seeing you hurt his buddy, the guy next to him, or kill his buddy, swings at you with his mace, and let's see. <laughs> okay. Uh, he swings at you, misses wildly in a rage. He swings at you again. Uh, it bounces off your shoulder and smack, and, and the mace splits in two. <laughs> and he freaks out, turns around, and runs. You get an attack of opportunity on him. Nice. Yeah. With me? Cool. Please don't suck. Oh, my gosh. Twelve? <laughs> you uh, swing at him, and um, <laughs> it barely clips him in the back. But it does clip him enough to cut skin. Blood comes trailing out, but he's still running. <laughs> nice. All right. Okay. And then, uh, oh, that's right. The two on Margraine. 17. This is 22. Uh, yeah. 22 hits. 22 right. hits. So the first one swings at you, misses, swings at you again, hits, takes six points of bludgeoning damage. Um, the next one swings at you. 19 misses, right? Okay. Yeah. So the next one swings at you and misses both times. And then um, Levin rides up on his steed. And the one passed all of you. And the one who's running away, he smashes with his mace. And he smashes, he caves another person's head in. This time from the back. Falls to the ground dead. Uh, back around to the top of turn order. Is your turn. Hey, Hibonite. Um, the guy running away. Um, Which guy? Oh, the yeah. Plate, plate mail. There's only one now. Firebolt, anyway. yeah. uh, firebolt. So 14 doesn't. No, that misses. Uh, goes wide. Uh, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, your turn, Margarine. Um. Okay. I'm going to run up. Uh, can I get within... Uh, oh, yeah. I can get plenty within 
uh, him. I'm gonna cast sleep on him. Uh, I'm gonna run up closer to him, cast sleep. Uh, let's see. 27. So if he's under 27 hit points, he he goes. He unconscious. goes unconscious. Okay, cool. So we've used sleep, and I'm gonna I'm gonna run up to him, and then I, I know I can't do it now, but attempt to start to tie him up. Okay. So. Oh, well, creepy girl. No. You. Um... <laughs> okay, so you run up to him and. Make sure. Yep. So since you're running up to him, the red hands both get an attack of opportunity on you. Oh, there's still other guys. Did up you kill them? Close to me. Uh, I, I killed I, one. I've lost track. Yeah, no, because they both just swung at you and missed. Or oh, one well hit then you for six points of damage, and then the other guy swung at you twice and missed. Okay. Okay. Well then, I won't run up close okay. to him. I'm just gonna drop him with sleep, and then I'll stay where okay, I am. Cool. Yep. I lost track of my spatial positioning. I understand. Um. Problem. So it is your turn now, Magnon. Oh, all right. Um, so I have two up. Yep. That correct. Both of them are on Margraine. All right. Um, I screw it. I'm going to reckless attack. So get advantage. Um, true strike and critical hit. <laughs> nice. Nice. So that's 23 points of damage, and then some divine fury goes into that. Uh, 29 points of damage. Okay. The, the, what did you say it was purple energy that comes out. All purple right. Energy, so purple yeah. energy radiates from your um, w- war hammer. You smash into his head, and it, it's like a blade through butter. You basically, just cut it right in two. Um, yeah. Wow. Or it, it, I mean, it's smashed in two, but yeah. The, the yeah. Smoothly, smoothly smashed in two. You did. <laughs> okay. So, it, oh, by the way, it's radiant damage. Yeah, so. I saw that. Um, okay. But thank you for letting me know. Um, and yep. so it is the other red hand's turn and seeing his buddy get hit, he turns and starts running as well. Both Margaret, oh well, uh, yeah, both Margraine and Magnar get an attack of opportunity. <laughs> yeah, nice. I'll, I'll take that. A seven doesn't hit him, I'm no, assuming. No, it does not. Four t- do you, is that plus your four? Oh, I guess it might not work. Um, 18 to hit. Uh, it does. Um, uh, eight <laughs> hit him. <laughs> eight does not. <laughs> Okay. Uh, what did you say? 18? 18 hits it. Um, okay. 18 total. Yeah. Right. Witch bolt. And that's 12 points of damage. Okay. Ooh. All right. And you drop him dead. All right. So they're all, all dead. We're out of initiative. Down. Cool. Okay. And now I'll run up and try and tie up the, the guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So uh, you, tie, you guys get up there and tie him up. And so we'll call it there. Thanks for joining us for episode 11 of Beholder's Eye. Once again, I apologize for the sound on this episode, but hopefully the content made up for it. I know that we're all thrilled with how the story is going. Uh, Hopefully you guys are too. Please remember to subscribe and review us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. It really helps us out a lot, and we really appreciate all the support you can give us. You can find us on Twitter at I underscore Beholders, and check out our website at BeholdersIcast.com. Make sure to check out the journal entries up from Margraine's point of view. Sam has also recorded them as well, so... If you want to hear his sweet, sweet, sultry voice, uh, go ahead and listen to that. Uh, Or you could just read it. Either way. Also, we have original character portraits up provided by Ben, who, as you know, plays Magnar. So we've got a crazy, talented cast here. I know I've said that before, but yeah, just in case you forgot. Music provided by Incompetech, Clash Defiant, Garden Music. Ominous, oppressive gloom, past the edge, vanishing, our story begins, Curse of the Scarab, all by Kevin McLeod in Competech.com, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license, creativecommons.org, all sound effects by zapsplat.com and freesound.org. For a full list of sound effects, please check out our show notes. Show editing, once again, performed by Sam Canary, and effects and music editing by Benjamin Floyd. Thanks a lot for joining us once again, and we will see you all next week.